believe this is a really vital challenge that needs to be faced over the next few years. I've got lots of experience of trying to access physical health services with a mental health problem and having difficulties. So today has been a really good day. Directors of nursing from Kent, Surrey and Sussex and their teams have come together to think about innovation in physical health. And what's been really good is it's not been competitive, it's about sharing ideas but ultimately thinking how can we improve services for people with mental health problems because we know the life expectancy of people with a mental health problem is often 15 to 20 years less than that of somebody who doesn't have one. We have got to do something about it. Historically, mental health services have looked after mental health and physical health services have looked after physical health, but actually that's not how it should be. We need to just look after people. There is a disparity between physical health and mental health and we do need to bridge that gap. We have plans for four of our sites to be able to start to run physical health pop-up clinics where patients, their carers and our staff will be able to come along and we'll be able to talk to them on an individual or a group basis about what really matters to them for their physical health. People with mental health problems are far less likely to engage in kind of routine screening and routine appointments. And we also know that people with mental health problems statistically are more likely to develop sexually transmitted infections, they're more likely to have unplanned pregnancies. And so if we develop a programme where we enable people to access screening, then we will be able to help support people through those problems. The second idea is that we are going to provide physical health and wellbeing clinics in our female wards within our forensic services. The reason for doing this, the women within forensic services are often marginalised, stigmatised, demonised. They are most probably our most vulnerable group of patients. So what we're going to do, combination physical health, physical fitness, getting people to find that sense of self and regain their hope. So we're going to be focusing a lot on sexual and reproductive health. So the idea is we're opening some new single sex acute wards and we're going to have a well man and a well woman pathway within each of those single sex services. So for example the well woman pathway will be having um, groups where women can come together and talk about being a woman, things like how to check your breasts, looking for kind of irregularities in your menstrual cycle, the sexual side effects of medication, things like that. But it being a really safe and open space where we're not embarrassed. Our staff feel that they need to develop their skills in physical health and mental health. And our plan was to develop three areas of clinical excellence in Canterbury, Maidstone and Dartford. Our third idea, we are going to become a licensed Duke of Edinburgh site. Duke of Edinburgh provides a service to 16 to 23 year olds. That is a crucial age. That's a time when you can make a really big difference. We will train lots of our staff to get involved in it, so that will help their physical well-being, their mental well-being, and in turn, they can give back from, to the community and help young people. Those young people involved in the Duke of Edinburgh site, if they want to consider an apprenticeship with us, a health and social care apprenticeship, we will be offering that. And that is our pledge to be part of Sussex community, not apart from it. So we'll be having um, dedicated physical health clinics for people with mental health problems, which are run by mental health staff. We're also going to make those clinics available to people who are carers of people with mental health problems. Carers sort of anecdotally report they are so exhausted of going to appointments, visits, routine conversations, then actually they just can't face doing that for themselves as well as their loved one. So we think it's really important that our project um, focuses on the health of people caring for people in our services as well as people in our services. With the development of some of the training, we may feel that our training requirements are very specific, but without the service user and carer involvement, 
um, it, it can become meaningless. So what we want to do in Kenton Medway is um, to have some workshops that we want to facilitate where we bring together our staff, our service users, carers to try and come up with the ideas about, you know, this is this is our objective, this is what we want to, to do. What do you think we got it right? What is missing? So that when we're designing the, the course content, it's very much collaborative. We need to get service users involved so we can understand the difficulties that they have in, in accessing some of the services and actually make the services easier for them to, to interact with. People who use services are experts in their own right and have a level of expertise that we as healthcare professionals may not be able to offer. We want service users, carers, to be involved in the shaping, the developing, the planning, the implementation and the evaluation of all these innovations. We don't see it as co-production, we see it as partnership and actually there is no other way to do it. This time next year, our service users will feel that their physical health assessments are far more meaningful. And this will be because our nurses or our medics will be providing more informed, more confident, more competent physical health assessments. Following today, now we've got a much better idea of what we're going to do. We're going to go away and we're going to set up a project team. And that project team will have people from all backgrounds and all areas so we can all share expertise together. It is a big challenge. We need to be very systematic with our thinking. We're going to try it out, test it, measure it. We'll be asking service users, have we got this right? And we'll be listening. When we can step back as a project team and things are running sort of by themselves and the people working on our wards are taking ownership of those projects and are running them for themselves because they want to, because they care about them. I think for me that's when a project's been successful. All of us coming together, you can see that there's lots of passion and excitement from everyone about mm -hmm. the agenda, so it's going to be a really great year working together.